welcome to the Payroll Podcast with your host, Nick Day of JGA Recruitment, Specialist Payroll Recruiters. Hello and welcome to the Payroll Podcast. My name is Nick Day from James Gray Associate Specialist Payroll Recruiters. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by Vicky Graham from the Chartered Institute of Payroll Professionals, better known as the CIPP. Vicky joined the CIPP in 2003 and has worked through the ranks successfully to become Associate Director of Marketing. She became part of the payroll industry at a similar time to myself, so we've both seen significant changes occur during this time, many of which have been as a direct result of Vicky's work, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail later. When I started in payroll recruitment, I remember the main qualifications being the IPPM diploma and the IBPM diploma. We've moved on a lot since then. It now has chartered status, which is fantastic. And of course, now we're all familiar with the number of courses and training qualifications that the CRPP deliver. Never one to rest, Vicky is now promoting opportunities for payroll professionals to gain individual chartered status. So I'll be keen to find out more about that. And Vicky's role now involves a great deal of environmental analysis, market research, and she's been instrumental in the development of the CIPP website too, which if you haven't checked out yet, I recommend that you do. The website has become a hub for payroll professionals to access information about a range of CIPP products and services. Welcome, Vicky. Five quick questions. Tell me a little bit more about your role at the CIPP. Hi Nick, so as you said I'm the Associate Director of Marketing uh, and part of that role is really about raising the profile of payroll within particularly managing directors, CEOs, HR directors and finance directors so that they understand the value and the importance of payroll, uh, particularly at a strategic level and really recognising the value of having somebody who is qualified looking after their biggest expense within their business. My role is also about identifying and developing the products and services that we offer so they're relevant to payroll professionals and can really help and support them through their careers. And you mentioned environmental analysis and market research in the introduction and really that's so that I understand what's going on and what our members and the industry would benefit from to make sure the CIPP is delivering that to the industry. Fantastic. Now, obviously, many of those products and services would have changed over the last 15 years. Talk to me a little bit about how the CRPP has developed in the time that you've been with the business. How hasn't it? We've seen significant changes at CIPP. I think the biggest change for us and the most exciting change for us is going uh, to chartered. So you mentioned about us gaining chartered status as an organisation, but now having individual chartered status for our members. And that's really exciting because for payroll professionals, that means they're now on an equal footing with HR professionals and accountants who already have chartered bodies representing them and I think that we're going to see that grow and develop we've already got our first chartered members there so that's great the other area that's changed and grown um, significantly is the digital space the IPP has a lot more online now you mentioned the website which I've been developing and continue to develop Uh, we have webinars that the policy team put together and issue monthly on key topics we have white papers that are available for download and we have online networking forums as part of the website as well which has all developed over the last few years and I think many listeners here will be familiar with some of the other chartered bodies that Vicky mentioned which are the CIPD or the CIMA with the for accountancy huge beneficial change to the industry seeing payroll get chartered status so if I was new to payroll Vicky and I was embarking on a career what support could the CIPP offer me Uh, The main thing I would say is the advisory service as a starter. Um, If you're new to the industry and you're new to payroll, you can contact the advisory service as part of your membership of CIPP and they're on hand to help with technical legislative questions as they arise in your day job. In addition to that, we also have an education portfolio. So if you're starting your career in payroll, uh, we have a programme called the Payroll Technician Certificate, which covers the day-to-day operations of a payroll department and a payroll function. That really is what we call like the nuts and bolts of payroll uh, that you would need as a new entrant to the market. Is that an NVQ equivalent or what kind of level of qualification would that be? So that's a level three qualification equivalent of an NVQ level three. Entry level, no previous experience, no previous qualifications required. But it's the starting point in our portfolio. So that then leads into our foundation degree programme. And we have a foundation degree in payroll management, which is accredited by the University of Worcester, that's a level five degree qualification. It's eligible for student funding as well. So if you haven't had a student loan before and you're looking at developing your career and going down a degree level qualification, then you might want to look at a student loan to help you fund that. From there, we go all the way up to a level seven qualification, which is a master's degree in business and reward management, 
which extends away a little bit from payroll, but into how it influences business and reward strategies at a director level. So really from a new entrant all the way up through to director level, we've got something that can support a payroll professional. Excellent. And actually, it's quite interesting because many people, in my experience, tend to fall into payroll. They don't necessarily take a degree route into the industry. So it's a really good opportunity for people that perhaps didn't go to university, who want a postgraduate or a graduate qualification to take it through their work within payroll as well, which is fantastic. You mentioned uh, membership as well. So is that a cost service? Is that a free service? Yeah, there is a cost to membership. Um, again, we have different levels depending on where you're at in your career. So entry level membership is £70 per year. And for that, you have access to the advisory service, our e-newsletter, which is sent daily or weekly, depending on your own preferences. But there's that much going on in payroll. I would recommend daily. There's at least five news items a day. But you also have access to our magazine, which is professional in payroll, pension and reward. And you have access to the online qu- content that I talked about earlier with regards to the webinar from the policy team on key topical issues. Fantastic. That seems like really good value. I think some magazine subscriptions by themselves are often more than that. So that sounds like a really good membership to have. So you've mentioned some of the services and qualifications the CIPP offer. Are there any other services that are perhaps underutilised at the moment or maybe that the payroll professionals listening to this aren't aware of that perhaps could really benefit a payroll operation? Yeah, so I think the one service I would definitely want to highlight is our benchmarking exercise. As part of CIPP membership, uh, full members and fellow members have access to a benchmarking survey every year that they can participate in. And then if they've participated in it, they get a copy of the benchmarking report. And it looks at things like the average cost per payslip, errors in a payroll department and things like that. So really, it's useful if you're looking to see how your costs compare with other payroll departments, if you're looking at implementing new software you can benchmark against others who are using the same software or different software to you if you're looking at bringing payroll back in house it will help support a business case for that or equally if you are looking to outsource it will help with that we also ask about salaries within the payroll team so that's always something that people are quite interested in to see how their salaries compare with other salaries in a similar industry because we can drill down to that level based on the respondents that we get it's something that isn't utilised as much as I'd like it to be but equally we're constantly asked by people throughout the year for this type of information so people obviously aren't aware that it is something that's part of their membership benefit package so I'd, I'd really urge people to take advantage of that. Excellent. It sounds like quite an agnostic service as well. So very unbiased, just a place to go to get lots of information. And actually, it's a service we offer as well. And I agree, it's something that's often underutilized by clients. And that tie into my next question, really. Um, What's your biggest marketing challenge then as Associate Director of Marketing at the CIPP? So the biggest challenge that I have and the CIPP has is reaching people who don't know what they don't know. And I think that's true of all marketing. So for every qualified payroll professional that is out there, there is a payroll practitioner that's quite happily going along, operating a payroll on a a monthly basis, and they're not aware of the support and the education that is available to them. Some of them aren't aware of some of the complex legislation that's involved because they're just quite happily sitting there doing doing their job every day which is fine and with the advent of social media it's provided a lot of opportunities uh, for people to find out certain things and um, so from a CIPP's point of view it's provided quite a lot of competition in terms of networking opportunities and ways of people finding things out but it also provides us with excellent networking and communication forums and we need to make sure that we've got an active voice in those so the people who aren't aware of us become aware of us. So as a percentage, if you were to consider how many people perhaps you think in the industry may not be aware of the CIPP, where would you estimate that to be? That's a difficult question. However, if you look at the fact that the CIPP has roughly nine to 10,000 members represented at the moment, and then if you look at government statistics that indicate that bookkeepers, accountants, and payroll professionals account for 500,000 people in the UK, we have a little drop in the ocean. So that's why I say for every qualified payroll professional, there is a practitioner out there who isn't aware of what they should be, which is the CIPP is available to support them and to educate them on everything they need to know about payroll. Really interesting statistics there. I think actually from our own internal research from a recruitment perspective, now bear in mind, we only take analysis for companies with typically 
500 employees or more, mm-hmm. of which there are about 7,000 companies uh, based on government statistics. So we estimate the industry to be about 35,000 strong, but that's payroll-specific people, full-time payroll people. Obviously, it could be a lot bigger for those working part-time or doing hybrid positions. Okay, fantastic. We're going to go to uh, a few more technical questions a little bit later. I want to hear a lot more about the CIPP. There's some other schemes we haven't discussed yet. But first, I'd like to know a little bit more about Vicky. Time to find out more about you. Firstly, how would your friends describe you, Vicky, and how would your work colleagues describe you? Loud, <laughs> in a word. Um, I'm a bit of an extrovert. I'm very loud in the office. I'm very loud at home. I'm not the loud. I'm one of four, and I'm not the loudest in the family. Wow. Um, but being an extrovert and being loud kind of helps when you you've chosen marketing as a career. Excellent, fantastic. So, how about something then that perhaps other people wouldn't know about you? I'm actually a little bit of a geek. Um, and I'm, I quite like and I find history fascinating, particularly from the 15 to the 1800s and how it's shaped the UK as we know it today. Um, you know, particularly like the Tudors and Stuarts and, and things like that. I'm getting quite excited and passionate. And yeah, I'm a bit of a geek. Also, um, with my geeky side in mind, I love things like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, which a lot of people find surprising. I'm a little bit surprised here. And for those that have already been part of uh, or listened to the first podcast we released, this is the second person I've now interviewed who has used history and the Tudors as a particular period of time that no one would have known about. I don't know, maybe this is a paywall thing. It's quite random. Okay, so a little different kind of scenario now, Vicky. You're abducted by aliens. Okay, you like your sci-fi, so this will work well for you. You want to learn more about our species. Firstly, what item do you take with you? High heels. Anyone that knows me knows that I I like my shoes and my high heels. Um, And I'd quite like the aliens to see what, as short women, we have to put ourselves through to make us average height. How many pairs do you have, do I ask? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) They fill a room. What game or instrument would you teach them? I would teach them football. Traditional English sport. I would definitely teach them football and the offside rule. Football fan yourself in a particular club? Aston Villa. Oh, nice. Okay, doing well this year in the championship. Mm, Until recently. I think they could throw it all away, unfortunately. But yeah, till recently. Good. What truth would you tell them about humans? I would tell them how compassionate people can be and that we have this desire and just natural urge to to help people. Excellent. Fantastic trait to, to mention. What about what truth or human trait would you hold back from telling them? I've actually been told that I can be too honest, so I don't think I'd hold anything back. I think I'd just tell them everything. Good and bad. Good and bad. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. But we're going to go back to some other questions now for the CIPP. I'm sure there's still lots of, lots of ground to cover. Five technical questions. Let's start with the, the obvious one for me. And I think it's been the biggest groundbreaking change in the apparel industry for some time when it happened. I want to hear it from Vicky's, uh, Vicky's words rather than my own. What does being chartered mean? Okay, so being chartered in any profession demonstrates professionalism and a commitment to ensuring that you're highly skilled, knowledgeable and willing to adapt and develop within your organisation in your chosen field. It demonstrates to your employer or your potential employer that you're worth investing in and that you're investing in their business as well. So you're protecting their organisation through your knowledge and your skill set. You understand what's going on so that you are avoiding fines for non-compliance, particularly relevant within payroll, I think. It also demonstrates that you're someone that will find efficiencies in the way that the business operates and the payroll department operates so that the organisation has the best possible person and people looking after, as I said earlier, their most expensive asset within the uh, the business. Excellent. I think it's often underestimated just being an expensive asset it is and ultimately payroll departments just pay out. It's really good with bringing it to the forefront. What new services then or innovations are the CIPP or yourself working on at present? There's a lot we're working on at the moment. Um, I can't tell you everything. Uh, We do have some (laughs) secrets um, that I would like to launch when the time is right. The one thing I'm working closely with policy and membership on at the moment is the benchmarking exercise which I mentioned earlier. So we're developing it to make sure that the report is highly utilised and valued by our members. I'm also working on some developments within the website which will make it a lot more personalised and interactive for our members and visitors to the site moving forward. I saw that you're promoting quite heavily on your website your payroll assurance scheme. Can you talk to me a little bit about what that involves or how that could benefit a department? 
Yeah, of course. So the payroll assurance scheme is an accreditation that we give to organisations on their payroll processes. So we would send an assessor in to look at how payroll operates within the organisation and make sure that there are processes in place which keep the organisation compliant. So if an HMRC representative were to go in and do an audit, they could see we've already been in and done that and they would be at a reduced risk of receiving a fine for non-compliance penalties. It gives, it's a bit like an MOT. It gives the organisation an assurance that they're up to date, they're compliant and they've got reduced risk within their business. Okay, so if I was interested in going through the payroll assurance scheme, Vicky, what would it cost me? It depends on the size of the organisation, but prices start at £2,625 plus VAT for companies with fewer than 250 employees. And the highest cost is 4200 plus VAT for larger organisations with over a 1,000 employees. Fantastic. If we were to fast forward 5, 10 or even 20 years, you can choose your period of time here, Vicky. What would you like the CIPP to have achieved in those timeframes? Okay, so in any of those timeframes, 5, 10, 20, what I would like is the CIPP to be the go-to place for the profession. So whenever someone thinks of payroll, they think of CIPP. Um, That's what I want to see happen within the next 5, 10, 20 years. I love that as an objective because it's exactly the same as what I want for recruitment. <laughs> I want someone to think of payroll recruitment, James Gray Associates or JGA Payroll. <laughs> think of us, think of us. I totally get that. In your opinion then, what is holding the payroll industry back? People who think payroll is simply pushing a button. So, And this is true of the payroll practitioners I mentioned earlier who aren't aware of the strategic role payroll can, can play within the business. It's also true of business owners and finance directors who don't appreciate what payroll can actually do within their organisations. People think software does everything, the payroll professional doesn't really need to do anything other than push a button. That's not the case. And as technology enhances, yes, the software will do a lot more. That makes the payroll professional's role more important in my eyes because actually that enables a payroll professional to be more strategic. That enables the payroll professional to have access to more information and more data that they can then use to influence reward strategies, for example, or they can influence cost management strategies because they can see, you know, where the biggest costs are in terms of absence or where the biggest costs are in terms of salaries and expenses and things like that. So they can really influence uh, a lot of business strategic decisions. I know uh, Payroll Professional Magazine recently had a a big feature on robotic process automization. So would you see the rise of RPA then as a risk because there's more buttons being pressed or an opportunity for payroll professionals? Definitely an opportunity. I think anywhere where there is a risk, there's an opportunity anyway. Uh, But I definitely see it as an opportunity because if there are more buttons being pressed and there's more automation, as I said, it enables you to actually have more time to be more strategic within your role. So has that changed the, um, the way that you're training professionals or the the types of courses you're going to be delivering in the future as as RPA grows? Yeah so the CIPP has never trained on payroll software we've always trained and continue to train on the calculations behind that in terms of our entry level. The qualifications have developed over recent years to include more soft skills and transferable skills I think that communication is something that's growing as a skill for payroll professionals where the payroll person used to sit in a back office and just carry on you know calculating things and getting people paid now they're responsible for talking to people about how they can make the most of their package overall how they can save money through flexible benefit platforms how they can save money through salary sacrifice we've recently done some research which shows that the number of inquiries coming in about people's tax codes is about 25 percent of the inquiries that are coming into a payroll department so communication is a skill that people need to to really enhance also about thinking like i said earlier about how a remuneration package overall will benefit employees and you know well-being is is the word of the day at the moment isn't it so it's about how utilizing the information that payroll has from the software um, and using that to say right i can see that we've got 75 percent of our workforce 
who are part-time working mums. So they will benefit from a flexible benefit platform that has um, childcare vouchers, that has savings at you know local supermarkets, that kind of thing. So people are getting more for their money. I so wholeheartedly agree as well. I think the best thing ever is watching payroll departments slowly come away from that back office room that you mentioned and coming to the forefront. I did a blog recently on LinkedIn that discussed whether payroll should be based within HR or finance. And actually the overarching response was payroll should be recognised as its own function and shouldn't necessarily be based within either and I know obviously the CIPP have been instrumental in uh, promoting payroll professionals to increase their visibility and, and their importance within shared services functions or, or HR functions or whatever it might be. So if you were to summarise the benefits then of becoming a CIPP member Vicky what would they be? Access to support uh, through our policy team through the advisory service access to knowledge again through the white papers and the webinars that we put out as well as the education programmes and a network of other payroll professionals as well. You've got the, the policy team, the education team, but through the CIPP, you've also got other members who are working in the industry, who are doing the job you know, day to day, who are probably facing similar challenges as yourself. You can call upon them you know, through the forums we've got on our website, and you can just network and discuss things and find solutions together. Payroll people often think that they're, they're on their own, and through the CIPP, they're not. So any problem, any question, if you're listening to this right now and you've got a payroll issue that you can't quite solve, you don't know where to go, check out the CIPP website, take a look at the forums, download the white papers or get in touch with one of the policy team. I'm sure someone somewhere will be able to help you within the CIPP, which is fantastic. Now, Vicky, I know historically the CIPP have always offered a um, fact app for legislation, tax tables and so on. Has it been updated for the new financial year for people to download? Yes, we recently updated it. And if you search iTunes or Google Play, you'll find it under CIPP Payroll Fact App. It's completely free of charge and members and non-members can access it. And where can it be accessed from? iTunes, Google Play, usual sources? Yeah, all of those. Fantastic. I should add as well that James Gray Associates have also just launched their first payroll app. Search it on iTunes or Google Play. Search for James Gray Associates or JGA. You should find it. Offering free payroll white papers, payroll blogs, payroll articles, lots of facts and information. Go to iTunes or Google Play and download both the CIPP app and the JGA app today. We're going to open the vault. Entering the vault. Five key questions key takeaways for the listeners out there. Number one, one piece of advice, Vicky, you would give to someone working in payroll right now? Join the CIPP. (laughs) Very quick, very simple, excellent. And I can see why we've gone through through all the answers today, which is fantastic. Number two, with the benefit of hindsight, what would be the one career decision you would change? Cheesy answer, but I wouldn't change anything. I have made mistakes, everybody's made mistakes, but without them, I wouldn't be the person that I am today and I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today, so I wouldn't change anything. Are there any mistakes, though, that helped shape that change? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No comment, no comment. (laughs) We'll leave that there, that's okay, one for us to imagine. If you had the power then of foresight instead and you could change the entire payroll industry with one action or improvement, what would that action or improvement be? I think it would be to make automatic enrolment mandatory. A lot of complexities were added in terms of who qualifies, who doesn't. People can opt out. I would have simplified it and just gone, everybody's in. Great. Loving it. Short and sweet. Perfect. Who motivates you and why? Another cheesy answer. It's changed recently. Um, It used to be my parents and everything that I did was to make them proud, which obviously still stands. But since being a mum, it's my little boy and I want to be a really good role model for him. Fantastic answer. Parent myself, so completely get that. Okay, if you didn't work in payroll, Vicky, what would you be doing? Scuba diving somewhere exotic. You qualified, got your paddy qualifications? Yeah, I'm an advanced scuba diver and I've got my nitrox as well. Wow, fantastic. Something I didn't know. You could have had that as your answer earlier. I think a lot of people know it though. I've done it on other things <laughs> ah, okay so where's the most exotic place you've scuba dived Ooh, either mexico or the red sea in egypt most amazing thing you've seen turtle awesome i should add as well before we go that on the 10th of october vicky and i are actually going to be doing a joint seminar at the annual conference and exhibition in birmingham on how to make social media work for you it's at 3.35 and we will also be undertaking a live podcast during the session. So I hope for those listening, you'll be able to join us for that. 
For those interested in going to the annual conference and exhibition and the payroll awards, membership prices, I believe, are £950 per person plus VAT. That does include accommodation and access to the awards. Or if you are a non-member and haven't signed up to the CIPP yet, then it's £1,150 plus VAT. Is there anything else you'd like me to add, Vicky? No, that's it. That's brilliant. Thank you. Fab, thanks for your time. For anyone interested in finding out more information about the CIPP services, you can go to their website, which is cipp.org. That's O-R-G dot U-K. Just repeat again, that's cipp.org dot U-K. And I want to say thank you ever so much to Vicky Graham for joining me today for this podcast. You've been listening to Nick Day. This is the Payroll Podcast, and I look forward to speaking to you all again next week. You've been listening to the Payroll Podcast with Nick Day of JGA Recruitment, Specialist Payroll Recruiters. If you would like to feature on a future podcast, please contact us. For a wealth of world-class payroll content, please visit us at jgarecruitment.com. See you next week.